Yeah, hi everyone. Jason here, Robot Lawn Miles Australia. Um, today we're going to have another quick look at the Motion Luba 5000 all-wheel drive. Um, we've got him set up here on our one of our test areas. Uh, currently mowing approximately, it's around about sort of 4,000 square metres all up thereabouts. Might be 4,500 in three different areas. So I'll run you through roughly what uh, what the areas are and show you the setup. And we'll come back and have a look at the uh, at the Luba and uh, what sort of job he's done and how he's been doing doing his, doing his job. Uh, this little spot here is the only real slope uh, in the area. Everything else is relatively flat, or there's, there's a couple of slopes down the back further, but this is the only area where it's actually uh, got some slope about it. Uh, and you can see the Luba really does a really great job. He's currently mowing, obviously, up in this, uh, in this sort of east-west pattern through here, so he's going to work his way up the hill. Um, but he has no issues travelling up and, straight up and down, turning around and going back up the hill either. Uh, the one thing we did do here, just to help him a little bit, was that we actually mapped the area out onto the concrete here, about half a metre to a metre onto the concrete, and that allowed him to uh, to turn around on a slightly flatter ground than, rather than spin his wheels like he is now, trying to turn around on the slope all the time. So, but uh, but no, he looks he's really has done an absolutely fantastic job. Um, yes, they do spin their wheels a little bit here and there, uh, the, the, the lubers when it comes onto the onto the slopes, but that's sort of with the skid steer action, that's sort of what they're going to do. Um, but now traveling on this sort of slope here and this slope at this little point here where it actually goes up just here uh, I measured that earlier and it's at about sort of it's about 45 uh, percent to 50 percent so it's not the not the biggest slope in the world but this loop the Luba has no troubles at all uh, handling this and actually turning around on it uh, the one thing we did do is we did exclude this little space just here now uh, the little space right here where where the con where the dirt actually steps up about nearly 100 millimetres it steps up and it actually hits the front bumper of the robot when it comes in and it hits the side there, the front bumper hits. Uh, so we would have had to, uh, to disengage or to turn the bumper off for the robot to work in that area. So we'll start back at the start over here. Um, like I said, the property here, well, the, the, the property we're on is actually quite large, but the area it's actually mowing at the moment is only around, around about 4,000 square metres in three separate areas. So what I'll do is I'll bring up the map uh, in front of us here. And I'll show you roughly where what we're talking about here. So, so you can see on the map there at the moment um, that the uh, that the loop is just mowing that one space over there. That's the smallest area of the of the three areas here. Um, and this area here is where the base station is. So our base station being just here is shown on the map uh, just down there. And then travelling south on the map, um, it goes the base. It comes down here. It goes around the top of this side here. Um, and I'll get down to the bottom here so the map's facing the same way. Uh, but then mows all of this area down here, down this slope. Uh, you can see the lines actually in the grass there. Um, where I had him going, had him going this morning. Um, he goes out to this garden edge here, down around, down to that tree there, all the way around the side there, and he does all this area here under all the trees here, all the way up to the front property there. Uh, he then crosses the driveway there. So now the map's facing the right way, and we're standing. Uh, just down just down below, I'll put a little dot here on the map hopefully, um, so I can show you where we're actually standing. Uh, it goes over the area over the side over the side there where the actual where the lube is actually mowing right now, which is the small area, and then the largest area, which is on this side over here behind my car, uh, all the area right through to the fence line, uh, right down to the side down the, down the side here, and then straight back towards us to the, on the top flat here. So everything else down past there is not being mowed. Like I said, it all adds up to around about 4,000 square meters. The base station set up, just quickly show you how it's all been set up. So we didn't take too much effort into doing anything here. We really have just sort of just plonked it on the ground and screwed it down to the ground here in a nice open space. And we put the antenna there just beside it here on the, on the, on the, in this garden edge. Now, that antenna is not in a bad location. It really is quite good. But what you can see is that sort of basically from looking at this angle here, straight up this way it actually does hit trees there so you're only going to get about you know, it's about 40 degrees off the uh, off the off the uh, off the uh, horizontal uh, before it actually uh, before it misses the trees there uh, when it goes back the other way it's not too much too bad going the other direction here up this way again not too bad but again it's you know, near the trees here and then back to this side here if we come back this direction um, you'll see that the antenna is right adjacent to this fairly large tree here so I'm not the most ideal location, but it does show that it, you know, that the um, that the, the the Luba can work quite well uh, when the antenna still is interrupted by by some trees. 
The one thing that uh, that a lot of people seem to talk about uh, on different reviews on the internet and on YouTube around the place is the signal between the uh, the RTK reference station or the antenna here to, to the actual robot itself to the Luba. Now, that connection between the antenna and the Luba is a, is a 900 megahertz signal. Uh, it's not really reliant on line of sight. In fact, it, is, it simply is not reliant on line of sight. So anyone that tells you differently, uh, they're, they're wrong. Um, the, the distance from the antenna there to the robot can be anything up to, well, the recommendations is about 120 metres at the moment, uh, but we have tested these up to sort of 150, 200 metres, and they still are working okay. At around the 200, 250 metre mark is where they really start dropping out completely, uh, and you, you really don't get much signal. So my recommendation is you keep that distance well under 200 metres would be ideal. Um, and like I said, the, the manufacturer's recommendation is, is the maximum distance is 120 metres from the RTK reference station to the robot, wherever it works. Um, so obviously the reference station can be installed completely independent from the base station. So it's something really worth noting is that you can put a separate power supply on the antenna and you can mount the antenna anywhere you like on your property, as long as it has a really good view of the sky. And like I said in previous videos and any other video relating to robot lawnmowers and RTK uh, antennas and setup, ideally what you want to see is a cone shape basically on both sides of that antenna to the sky, all the way around and have a clear view of the sky for approximately sort of like, you know, 120 degrees is the absolute minimum. Um, I would prefer to like to see 160 degrees on all sides, which it's not getting here. It's really probably only getting around about 120 to 140 degrees here. Uh, in any in any location around the, around the antenna at the moment. So, you know, in this particular circumstance here, it really is working quite well um, and not quite installed to what I would highly recommend that you try to achieve. Um, the tree coverage. Now, the tree coverage uh, in this area, so is particularly why we've actually installed it in this spot, um, is to sort of show you, you know, what you can get away with with, with the Luba. Now, we've had this robot installed here for I think it's been about two or three weeks now in this location, in that ballpark. Um, and we've had no actual RTK or positioning errors at all. Uh, we certainly have had a couple of errors, there's no issues about that. Um, but on a couple of occasions the robot's got it caught up on sticks or it's got caught up on um, on uh, you know, rocks and things around the place. There was actually a, a nice pile of rocks actually behind those trees over there that was covered by a pile of leaves at one point that the robot actually climbed up on top of the rocks that we didn't see when we were actually mapping it out. Uh, and there's a few things like these holes around the place that we have actually corded around. Um, the Luba would probably, now, he probably, probably wouldn't quite go through this hole. This is probably quite, quite significant, this hole here. Uh, but the Luba really is very agile in its ability to actually go through, uh, to go through holes and over a rougher terrain. So, like I said, the tree coverage in this area, um, you know, the, basically got the deciduous trees there have actually dropped nearly all their leaves now, so there's not many leaves on those guys. Um, but this tree here in particular has got quite a decent thick canopy on it. Um, it doesn't actually touch this one here, so actually, there is distance between these two trees here. Um, but there's a canopy on this tree here. There's obviously a canopy all the way down the side there that's up against the trees there that are quite thick. Uh, and then coming through the side here again, there's a couple of deciduous trees here that have dropped most of their leaves. Um, and a couple of trees that have not sort of thing. So, we, again, we have no issues at all with any of the uh, any of the positioning areas on this on this robot. We haven't had one in uh, in two or three weeks of operation here. So things locations like this here, where you can see it, it's under, I wouldn't call it a thick canopy, but it's certainly a canopy. It's up against uh, the pine tree here, uh, which is uh, definitely uh, casting quite a decent shadow. Um, there's a lot of low hanging uh, plants around the place as well, so the robot was able to get up and mow in and amongst those without any problems at all. So that's the area one, uh, or the larger area on the left-hand side of the map. I'll take you over to the other side here. In fact, I'll just show you Luba working on a bit of a slope there at the moment. Um, like I said, they really are really agile machines in, in, in how they actually operate. Uh, there's actually a, there's a boundary going around uh, this tree here. That's why he's turning around at the moment. There's also one around that post as well, so he'll probably turn around and actually... Uh, only go a short distance, but running up and down on this slope here, like I said, it's, it's around about sort of 45%. There's probably a couple of locations along there where it's closer to 55%. Um, so it's not the steepest slope ever, um, but the robot really has you know, no issues whatsoever in, uh, in turning, reversing, uh, getting along that slope. So this is the smaller of the areas there at the very top of the map. Um, again, we've got quite a few isolated areas here. 
But what we do have is some more fairly significant tree cover here. This is more of a gum tree of sorts. Um, again, it's not really, really thick. Uh, once you're, once you're underneath the canopy of the tree, um, you really can, you know, you can still see through the tree, see to the sky, so it's not super thick, but it's certainly uh, going to uh, create some GPS shadow. Um, and the robot, again, had no issues mowing all the way through, all up inside here, no problems at all, um, all the way down this side. Again, we've got trees on both sides when we come down through here. And then crossing over this footpath here, it moves on to the area three, which is on the right-hand side of the map. Um, so we're now crossing between the area two and area three there. And again, we've got you know, a lot of open space with trees uh, between them, but we've also got a lot of shaded spots here with this tree here. And again, this large gum tree on this side of the path as well. Uh, it's shadowing quite a lot of this area here. Uh, another gum tree there shadowing above that one. So we had the robot mowing in here, no problems whatsoever. It never had, never faltered in the three weeks it was here. And all the way through the side here. Actually hasn't mowed in this area here for about five or six days now. Uh, so it does look a little bit overgrown. Um, but mostly again, it really is all about testing this tree cover. Uh, we're not really so concerned about actual the mowing of the grass at the moment because we are fully aware that the, the, that the Luba can definitely mow grass. But again, we've got you know, a couple of gum trees. Again, the robot's mowing right in amongst the side here without any problems whatsoever. Amongst all these trees through here. Um, has no problems whatsoever. A little location over here is where I sort of expected possibly for it to have some issues, but again it did not. Um, so again, the mowers were mowing all the way through the side here, all the way down the side of this path here, underneath the tree line here as well, with trees on both sides. So again, you know, definitely got absolutely good view of the sky above it, but only directly above it. Uh, and that's where it becomes really, really important. In fact, I'll just uh, throw a couple of pictures up here when it comes to placement of the RTK uh, antenna. Um, so you can see uh, in this picture um, that the, you know, the, the satellites uh, that are up in the sky, the RTK reference station can only see the, uh, can only see the satellites that are actually on the left-hand side of the house, um, and the robot positioned on the right-hand side of the house can only see the robots that are positioned on the right-hand side of the house. So in that particular scenario there is exactly why you have any issues with your positioning. So the most important thing you need to remember with any of these RTK systems is that the robot and the RTK reference station have to connect to the same satellites. It's not about whether they can just see satellites, they have to actually connect to the same satellites. Um, and that's where people really do find themselves uh, in quite a bit of trouble where they'll install the reference station you know, on one side of their property and they'll have issues on the other side of their property because the reference station and the robot are not seeing the same satellites in the sky. So that's why it's very important uh, to do something like this. So on this particular image now, you can see that the, uh, the RTK reference station antenna is actually mounted on top of the peak of the house. Uh, therefore, it can see pretty much every satellite in the sky. And as long as the robot can see satellites where it needs to, where it needs to travel, uh, then they'll, be, they'll both be reading the same satellites and the robot will work perfectly okay. Uh, what we've typically found with testing the Luba uh, and other RTK robots is that they seem to need to be connected to around about 15, 15 satellites um, for them to sort of position themselves really, really well. Um, it's probably only half a dozen for them to actually work, but for them to work well, we seem to think that around, around about 15 seems to be the, be, be the number. Seems like a quite a lot of satellites, but what we've also found is at any given time, um, it seems to be that there's roughly, roughly sort of 40 to 50 satellites available in the sky uh, for the robots and the RTK base stations to connect to. Um, and we quite, ref quite regularly see quite a lot. In fact, we'll have a look right now. So on the app for the, uh, for the, for the, for the Luba, um, we can press on the POS at the top there and it tells us what we're actually connected to. So you can see there, that this, the reference station, the third line down there, is connected to 41 satellites, and that Luber itself is connected to 30, or 29 now, and 42 on, this, on the reference station. So 
they really do see quite a lot of uh, a lot of satellites. There's not re there's not really a big issue uh, with the amount of satellites that we have available to us uh, above the skies of Australia. Um, it's really just to making sure that the reference station and the LUBA can see the same satellites. It really is the most important thing to factor in. So I'm not sure what else to. Uh, like I said, this video is not really about how well it's mowing the grass because, well, like I said, we really do know that the Luba can mow grass. There's no, there's no problems about that. What I will do is have a look under Luba. Um, I did set Luba going very early this morning when the grass was definitely wet uh, down in Area 1. And if there's any build-up of grass, it should be well and truly present uh, this afternoon. So we'll walk up in here and we'll just, we'll just uh, hit the stop button and we'll have a look to see how much grass is actually underneath the robot. Okay, so there is quite a bit. Um, so through the middle there, there's only sort of you know, five, or, five or six mil of, uh, of grass, but you can see up in the back there, uh, it's, not, it's actually not too bad. It's a bit better than I expected, to tell you the truth. Um, there's not a lot of grass caught up in the backside there. Uh, what you do tend to see though, is you tend to see quite a lot of grass build up in behind these guards down the, down the side here. And quite often you'll see that they'll build up a significant amount of grass down that side to the point that it can actually clog up the robot and uh, and end up s stalling the actual cutting blades so I'll give him a I'll give him a quick clean out here and um, and we'll set him off back running again okay so that's all cleaned out I'm just clean that out with my fingers this really is a pretty quick pretty, pretty easy job to do um, because Luba has been lifted you can see on the screen there now um, it says Luba is locked um, that's because we've lifted the robot um, or, or had the bump sensor pressed for a long period of time, or the lift sensors are lifted for a long period of time. Um, to clear that error, we just press Mo and start, and that clears the error, and Mo and, and, and Luba starts back up again, goes back to the position that he was actually in before, uh, and then continues mowing. You can see that little pile of grass there that I cleaned out. Um, so that's how much was actually caught. That's how much grass was actually caught underneath Luba today. Um, he is cutting quite a bit of grass down the back there because he wasn't cutting down the back for a few days. Um, and then I lowered the height quite a bit so he's actually can see some of these blades of grass here are sort of 20, 30 mil long. Um, most of them are around about 10 mil. So he, he has been cutting quite a lot of grass off. Um, and what we have really found mostly is that when Luba is only cutting a small amount of grass like he, like he should be um, and only cutting a small amount every day, then the grass doesn't seem to get built up anywhere near as much. Um, if it is mowing wet grass, then you will find that grass will build up under Luba. And it's uh, certainly uh, something that the, uh, the manufacturers need to look at over time, is uh, trying to work out how to install uh, blade guards and that around the uh, blade system to stop the, uh, stop the grass from building up uh, under Luba. Um, I don't see it as a particular big problem. Um, there's a lot of people out there sort of that, that are considering that a, a major issue. Um, it is a major issue if you are cutting long grass and wet grass. So if you can sort of, if you can try and schedule Luba to mow more in the drier areas or the drier times, um, and try and mow more often so that it's not uh, not cutting long grass. Um, if Luba is only cutting you know three or four mil off, off at a time, then you really won't see you know, too much of that build up under the under, under the robot, and it does tend to dry and fall off um, as as it builds up. Um, the blade guards on the side of the robot. And I'll throw a picture up here on the, on the screen. The blade guards on the side of the robot seems to be what really keeps that uh, keeps the clippings in there, uh, and it builds up in around that blade guard, and that's what seems to cause most of the problems when it comes to grass buildup uh, under the blades under the Luba blade system. So I'll quickly just talk about uh, some of the things uh, that I think Luba could improve on, um, and the biggest of which is the is push notifications on its uh, on its uh, connectivity. So Luba does connect uh, through Wi-Fi, and we've got a Wi-Fi set up here so that I have always got access to see the robot, see what it's doing, the status of the robot. And whilst I have the app open, um, Luba does notify me and tells me if there's anything wrong, or anything's gone wrong, whether it's got stuck or you know, bumped into something, whatever it might be, and we get, or a stick's got caught underneath it like he's trying to do right now. Um, if, yeah, if, if, the, if the app's open, You'll, you'll get that notification, but there's no push notification function in Luba's app at the moment for it to actually push that notification through to your phone and alert you that there's a problem uh, with Luba. So hopefully in, uh, in future updates, I know it's one of the primary things that I know they're working on in Momotion, so hopefully in, the, in future updates in the next month or so, we'll actually start seeing uh, push notifications come through 
uh, the robot, so once the, as long as the robot's in Wi-Fi range, it will notify you and send you a push notification that will actually alert you on your phone um, of what's actually going on, uh, what's happened to Luba. Um, there's a lot of questions around at the moment around security on Luba. Um, so essentially Luba doesn't have any real security um, be- because it's connected to Wi-Fi. So if someone is to pick up the robot and take it away from your property, as soon as it leaves your Wi-Fi range, it is no longer going to be able to notify you. Um, so that's basically there's just no questions about that. Um, if once it's outside, once it's outside of its Wi-Fi range, there's no way it can com- communicate to you. Um, it will communicate to you and send you a notification if it is outside of its area. Um, but again, because there's no push notifications, you're not alerted to the fact that it's been outside of its area. It's only if you've got the app open at the time that you'll actually see that, or possibly after the fact, um, you'll actually open up the app to see that it's recorded a fault to say that it was actually outside of its area, but that's the only notification you'll see as far as it comes to actual security on the Luba. Um, what we highly recommend with the Luba is, is that you put something like an Apple AirTag uh, inside uh, Luba, so that uh, so that you can actually so that you can actually track and understand where Luba is at all times. Um, so I think that's about it for this one, guys. Um, and so this video was really mostly about showing you how Luba you know, can position itself and operate. Yeah, under under tree lines um, we do have another property we're going to test this on in the, in the coming weeks that'll actually push that boundary a little bit further and we'll see if we can actually get Luba to fail um, like I've mentioned many times um, you know the our you know our initial response on the initial uh, stance on these are uh, on the motion Luba is that the RTK system actually does work better than what we had expected it to do work we really did expect that even in a property like this one that we're testing right now um, we highly expected that it w- probably would have uh, failed to communicate at some point and have some sort of RTK positioning error um, and it simply has not so it's really fantastic. Um, as always you know guys if you do have any questions please just email us um, at sales at robotlawnmowers.com.au um, you can find a whole bunch more information on our website at robotlawnmowers.com.au and uh, you can uh, check us out on Facebook uh, Instagram and those sorts of places uh, just search for Robot Lawnmowers Australia. Thanks for watching.